Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the private room. And tonight we have one of my favorite panels, and I'm sure you know why, is our relationships and sex talk panel. We have our regularly monthly panelists. And as you know, we always invite someone on here to give their different perspective from the rest of us that are here every month. So tonight we have Mr. Jamal Evans. I have known Jamal for a long time long, long time, like pre uh, skinny girl times, like back in my fat girl days, you know, back, back, way back then. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, doing some open mic and he was doing poetry. He's a really good friend of um, one of my really good friends, Miss J Star in Maryland. So Jamal is coming from a, you know, a whole nother place on the planet. Cause most of us, I think are on, are in North Carolina. I think, I think all of us are. But Jamal, he's up there in the DMV area. So he is going to be with us tonight. So I'm really excited to have him here um, because like I said, he knew me in my juicier days and um, you know my single days before I had kids. So I was a little rampant on the social scene back then. <laughs> oh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, Jamal, for taking the time to be on the PR Relationships and Sex Talk. We are talking about monogamy tonight. So when we were here before, we were talking about all the different types of relationship styles. We have people in the comments like, what the heck is poly and what is swinging and what is this and why that man got three girlfriends on camera and all that good stuff. So it got real, real juicy. You know, it got really, really juicy. So tonight we're going to talk about monogamy. Is that the only way to be happy? Is that the only way to be in love? Is that the only way to have a successful relationship. So that's what we are talking about tonight. So we have our regular panelists. So we're going to do introductions because if this is your first time watching us, shame on you. But I want to make sure that you know who all of our panelists are every time that you tune in. So tonight we are going to start with, well, in order of who I can see, we're going to start with Mr. Fred Bryant. So please introduce yourself, sir. Fred, Fred being, uh, Fred, you on mute. <laughs> you on mute. Can you hear me now? There you go. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm Fred Bryant. Um, I've been knowing Tiffany for quite some time. I can't say as long as Jamal, but um, I've been knowing her for quite some time. Beautiful young lady. Uh, happy to call her friend. Um, and uh, excited to be on the panel tonight to talk about monogamy. Um, I am uh, very well versed in monogamy. Um, I, and I enjoy it. I think there are several uh, points to it that I hope I get a chance to share tonight. But um, I'm a person that uh, just enjoys open, intelligent conversation. And I'm, I'm just excited to uh, share some thoughts tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good introduction. Good introduction. Um, so we're going to move right on along. We have um, Barry. Barry, introduce yourself. And please make sure that y'all include your current relationship style. So I'm going to go back to Fred. What's your current relationship style? Is um, it monogamy? I'm I'm very open. All, it really all depends upon the people that are involved. Okay. I'm to being poly, and I'm also open to monogamy. You know, so it really depends upon the people that are involved. Okay, okay, like it, like it. Okay, Barry, it's on you. Um, my name is Barry Scarborough. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, this is my second time on the panel and I've uh, enjoyed myself very much last time. Um, I am polyamorous. I have several partners. I spent majority of my life as a monogamous man and um, it didn't work for me. And um, the more I learn about polyamory, the more I appreciate it. And um, not to knock anybody else's way of life, but for me, monogamy has kind of come rather toxic and controlling and ownership 
So um, I choose polyamory. I choose <clears throat> being open and free. I'm I'm free to date who I want. I have full body autonomy, and anybody I date does as well. Nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. You um you had did a lot of education your first time on the relationships and sex talk um, episode that we did two months ago. Um, so there, people had questions. They wanted to know what was going on. They want to know who these ladies were beside you. So we really had some good education um, when you came on for your debut on the relationships and sex talk ep- uh, panel. Um, so thank you for sharing and thank you for sharing your life and your, your ladies with us. Thank you. Um, next up, Miss Roe P. Hello everyone, I'm Ropi Hill. I'm an artist here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I sing, I write, I model, I host, act, a bunch of stuff. Um, This is my second time on a panel. As far as my status, I am single, single. I have no man, I don't have a woman, but I am open to different forms. I've only been in a monogamous relationship type, but now that I've been divorced twice, I think I need to try something different, so. Um, I'm kind of open and just going with the flow and what makes me happy. Nice, 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 nice. So you said you are open to it. So are you open to what other relationship dynamic are you open to? Well, just depends, whatever fits me. Okay. Um, I don't know. I've only been introduced to poly and monogamy and there are good aspects on both sides. So I can't really say what I do. It just whatever fits me at the moment. I guess. Nice, nice. Well, we are going to talk a little bit more about that tonight. Let's see what you say at the end. We're gonna talk at the end, see what everybody's uh you know consensus is and how they're feeling at the end <laughs> after we talk about this. Um, choice, please introduce yourself. Uh oh. Did we lose choice? Choice, you there? You there? You there? Let me get off the blank screen so we're not just looking at a black screen. Okay. All right. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Hi, choice. You there? Maybe. No? A little bit? Okay. We're going to let Jamal. Jamal, introduce us. You are our special guest tonight. So please introduce yourself, but I want you to give us a little bit more. Why don't you give us like, you know, what you do, your social media, all that good stuff. Uh, well, this, this, this was clear up a few things. Okay. Okay. We did not meet on the poetry scene. Okay? We didn't? No, we what didn't. Did we, 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 we met a long time ago. I actually forget how, but it wasn't through poetry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I did know you um, prior to you being married. So we can say that. Um, <laughs> I, and I'm also in Baltimore. We do not claim DMV. All right. Uh, we don't claim y'all either, sir. We don't claim y'all either. That's fine. Lord. Let's, let's just be clear now. Let's, let's lay this foundation out. We do not claim DMV. It's a whole different. I don't culture. know why my camera keeps going off. I'm sorry. Because y'all ain't I, see my face that I just did. I, I was I, like, right. what? <laughs> we don't claim a, y'all either. <laughs> that's a totally different culture. Okay. Know. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> that's mambo sauce and, you know. Yes, uh, go go. go okay. all that. Yeah, yeah, we're not. Yeah, we don't listen to that house music stuff that y'all be listening okay. to. Hey, that's all right though. But still, <laughs> uh, uh, I am single, uh, monogamous. Um, uh, nothing against poly or anything. Uh, I just, to be honest, I just don't have the energy to be juggling multiple women. I really don't. Um, time between work, um, between my, my, my actual full-time job, also working um, in media and creating and other things, and just, you know, family as well. Mm-hmm. My, my time is, my time is very precious. Um, mm-hmm. So if you can do it, God bless you, Barry, God bless you, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, if you, you can do all this <laughs> juggling, go ahead, man. I'm gonna throw you some more balls, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I, I, really, I really don't have the energy um, for that. Um, mm-hmm. So. It does take a lot to juggle yeah, a whole bunch I, of women. Yeah, just a lot of, you know, a lot or of men. men, women, whatever, whatever you yeah. think. But um, 
you know, for me juggling multiple women at this stage, look, I'm 49. I, I got too many things on my plate mm-hmm. um, to deal with multiple personalities, mm. multiple people, um, just so many different things, different aspects. Understood. 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 Right. So your current is monogamy is your uh, relationship dynamic of choice. Yes. Got it. Got it. Okay. Choice, you there? Choice is being incog Negro today. <laughs> okay. We'll come back to him. Okay. So everybody knows me. Um, I basically base my relationship dynamic based on who I'm dating at the time. Um, whoever it is that I'm in a serious relationship with, I can be monogamous or I can be um, polyamorous. I do not like the swinging lifestyle, it did not like me. Um, <laughs> so that is not something that I'm interested in. Um, I believe in connections and you know having that 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 connection with the person. And I know that you can do that with monogamy and polyamory. Um, so I'm okay with either one. I don't knock anybody's relationship dynamic. Whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy, then um, go for it. And I'm gonna support you either way. But for me, um, monogamy or polyamory is um, the two relationships dynamics that I can do successfully um, and enjoyably. <laughs> regardless of which one that I choose to do. And, but it does, I'm like Fred, it depends on my, um, the person that I'm with. If that's something that they're open to, to doing, then I will do that. I do have some stipulations though. And we're gonna talk about that. I do have some stipulations when it comes to polyamory. So we're gonna talk about that. But we're gonna talk about monogamy first because that's like the whole title of tonight's episode is monogamy. Mm-hmm. So. I know that Jamal, you said monogamy is your your choice. That is something that you prefer. And you said a lot of it has to do with like, you know, juggling time, priorities and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So on a personal level, why do you feel outside of job, career, so forth? I'm talking about personal, just just Jamal, all about Jamal. Why why can't why will you not do the other one? Listen, I, I I spent a lot of time dating a lot of women. Okay. I've had so first it's going to take a lot for you to to for me to commit to you. I'm not I'm not going to commit to any just any woman, right? Because there are certain things you're going to have to show me in reference to that. But once I'm locked in, I'm locked in. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I could be dating two or three different women at the same time but i'm not committed right once committed is different and the dynamic changes because that's where my attention goes um you know i'm saying and 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 for essentially that's what it comes down for me right it's it's not a uh one is better than the other it just works for me um and and trying to juggle just just the personalities and different people and what's happening with you today and happening with you here this is not conducive for me. Um, now, I understand the perks of it. I, mm. I get it. You know, I, I get all the perks of it. I can understand why someone engages in that. But at this point, I, for me, I just need to know, are you where you at as far as um, being able to operate in a healthy relationship? Right. Mm. Um, and we say that easily, but I mean, we say healthy relationship, but we don't really define that. I, I think the one thing that we do not do in, in just period in any type of relationship dynamic is have foundational principles on which to make you a good person in a relationship. Right. Right. If you don't have integrity, you're not going to have integrity in a relationship. Right. Yeah. If you're not patient, you're not going to wind up and say, oh, I found my man. I found my woman. Now I have patience. Well, you weren't practicing it with your neighbor. So how are you going to have it in this relationship? Okay. Right. Uh-huh. So just have just certain principles or foundation that, that actually make you strong within that dynamic, whatever it look like, right? So for me, maybe in some, and, and that's something we do not intentionally focus on at all as an American society, right. okay? Uh-huh. We don't focus on that, right? And that aspect of how can I be a good partner for whoever I'm with, right? How can I be a good husband for that person, Right. 
not necessary is not necessarily about give me give me give me or i'm a give 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 but what is the balance and how we operate in there and that's mm-hmm. okay okay anybody got any comments on that i think that you know in monogamous relationships and poly relationships it you you have to have those those things as well you have to have a a solid foundation. You have to have, you know, open communication, all of that good stuff. But in both, you also have to know your limits to, you know, or your limits, your boundaries. And that's what I was saying when it comes to polyamory. I have my boundaries and I have my, you know, let's talk about it. We got some rules that we got to put in place because not only is it about us, now we're adding other people to our relationship. So, um, Barry, you are you are currently poly, so you're currently in a poly relationship. I am. So why did monogamy not work for you, and why did you choose polyamory? Um, well, I think, um, for example, um, you know the the idea. Uh, first of all, I want to clear up the like polyamory does not mean you know just sleeping around and you know. Mm-hmm. It does women. not. Yeah. I, I, relationships mm-hmm. and they're serious relationships that i've bonded with and built relationships with and uh plan on them being as long term as any monogamous relationship i've had in the past mm-hmm. um and for me it's kind of two sides coming into polyamory it, a lot of it was maybe for the wrong reasons that um People aren't committed anyway. People cheat anyway. Mm-hmm. So, why am I going to put all my eggs in one basket? You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. I've learned a lot since then. And for me now, it's more an idea of a realization that, um, you know, like you were saying, as far as like trying to juggle multiple relationships, mm-hmm. for me, that is much easier than feeling like I have to be everything to one person or to expecting that one person to fulfill every need that I have. And that, in my opinion, that is just too much to ask of anybody. I, I don't think that's even possible to be everything for somebody. So being polyamorous, I have partners that fulfill different needs for me. It's not always sexual. Some I. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's um, so some relationships are uh, a little more exciting and fun and go out, and then other relationships are you know a little more relaxed on the couch and you know watch a little TV and cuddle before bed, and it, it just every relationship is different. And um, for me, I. I, I will admit that I probably got into it for the wrong reasons. I was getting out of a bad relationship and I just did not want to commit. Now I'm committed to multiple relationships. <laughs> and I realized that that's my personality. I'm, I'm a feelings guy. I, I can't just like sleep around. Like I, um, I enjoy the connection and intimacy. Um, but I found that it works best for me to not try to be everything to anybody and not have that type of pressure. Okay, I hear you. Can't hear you. Right. Okay, sorry. Um, I know that one thing Jamal said earlier was about the, the juggling multiple people and how that would be way too much. So how do you do it, um, Barry? And how does, what is your expectations from your from your partners when it comes to time because you that means you're like spreading your time amongst several people yeah and um i like attention right so so it works for me like i like getting attention and i like giving attention so as opposed to waiting all day for your monogamous partner or wife to get off work and you finally hear from them like I throughout the day have different interactions and different partners have different schedules and, you know, different times that I may like check in, you know, how, how are you doing today? What's going on? And, you know, there's, 
I have partners that get up as early as I do for work and they'll get a good morning text at six o'clock in the morning. And then I have other partners that I won't hear from them until noon because that's, you know, more their schedule. And, <laughs> and when they, so, um, it does get a little difficult sometimes with multiple partners as far as scheduling quality time together. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Uh, which can be a problem for me anyway, because I'm a busy man outside of relationships. Mm -hmm. I, I have stuff going on in my life, but, um, you know, I really try to make quality. I, I try to make the time that I have with a partner quality time. It's about me and them. I'm not on the phone with other partners. Mm -hmm. It's that's mine and that partner's time. And right. we're focused on each other. And most okay. of my, I found that most of my partners, I found that it works a lot better if I date other polyamorous people because they're not, I've tried dating monogamous people that were okay with polyamory and I don't think they felt as fulfilled because they didn't have other things going on. Gotcha. Gotcha. So See, how my, does, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. So my problem and issue is, okay, so I'm trying to find where I want to be. And I'm saying this because I know I don't want a traditional type relationship. But I also know that I want companionship. I'm at a point where I want more so companionship than the relationship. I also know that I'm one of them people who likes to spend quality time with my person. So not clingy, because I do want you to go do your thing and I go do mine. But when I want to be with you, I want to be with you. And so it's like, I don't mind you seeing other people, you doing other things with other people. Um, cause then it means you ain't focused on me. Cause yeah, I got shit to do too. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of like, you know, in that in between stage, but then it's like when I find my person or, you know, whatever, I don't sleep around. So it's like, when I find my person, I'm comfortable with you. And just like me knowing that I have the option of being with somebody else, if I choose to be, it's perfect. Doesn't mean that I'm going to go do it. But if I feel like that's what I want to do at that time, I want to do it without having to feel like I'm being judged or damn being a slut or whatever. But I do choose wisely, like who I sleep with. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't just go out here sleeping with people just because. And yeah. I, I do feel like there can be a different dynamics. For example, I have a nesting partner. We share bills together. We are. We live together, we, we do all of those things. So, of course, there's a certain hierarchy in our relationship that. Um, so, well, can you mute until, unless you're talking, please? Go ahead, Barry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, that's fine. Um, so, my nesting partner and I, we do have that quality time. We have that, that most days we're together most days we go to bed together most days we wake up you know um kiss on the cheek on the way out to work type stuff and then i have other partners that i might see once a month you know they they live an hour hour and a half away we spend time together when we can um it's still special we still care about each other and it's it doesn't i don't it's not less than it's just different right so I, in polyamory, you can still have that connection with somebody to where you have your person. Mm -hmm. well, okay, the okay, so I got another question. So with all of this being said and done, how do you catch yourself from not having like uh, an emotional connection with other people? Like whoever your person is, like your nesting partner, right? Y'all do all of the things that you would do considered in a monogamous relationship. So how would it be like you're spending time with another person, but you over here having more feelings for this person over here? Because I don't care what people say. You cannot spend quality time mm -hmm. with someone and not have some Happy. type of emotional connection with that person. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck if it's once a month. You're still going to feel some type of connection yep. with that person. And I feel like it's not right that you have the intimacy with another person 
that you have with that person who you consider your main chick. You get what I'm saying? Can, can I respond to that? Go, well, I don't know. You was talking to Jamal. No, I mean, whoever wants to answer. So, the so let me. Are, are you talking about a, a, an emotional connection yes. or a sexual connection? It's emotional. See, that's the difference. See, people always say, "Oh, it's not about the sex. It's not about the sex." So, if it's not about the sex, I'm gonna say this. First, I'm gonna apologize. If it's not, you better believe sex is in the top three reasons why I'm in. The but apology. I'm just. Oh people, yeah. People always <laughs> say that it's not about sex. So it's about more building connections and community. Okay, if that's the case, then why are you having an emotional connection with this person? Why is it, if it's just about, okay, and, or if it's just about sex, then it means you go in, you fuck, you get the fuck out. It's no so I, pillow talk, it's no let's get to know each other. It's none of that. It's this is where you're getting Kali wrong. This is where you're no, getting I'm at, no, 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 I'm asking, I'm not asking it. I'm asking a question on how do you be in a poly relationship and not get emotionally attached to someone if you're supposed to have a main person? But, but the, a poly the, is about connections. So poly yeah. is you about having what? those connections. You can, have, you can have emotions for more than one person mm -hmm. and still have successful relationships. So poly is about relationships. Swinging is about just sex and fucking and have and having okay. sex, but poly relationships are about having relate, having connections, having some kind of, you know, something energy between each other that allows y'all to have multiple relationships and still have. You can have feelings for this person here, this person here, that person there, and without everybody anybody feeling neglected. Some people might feel ne neglected at some point. Um, but poly relationships are, they're about connections. They're about emotions. They're about spending time with someone that actually means something to you. So when you think about swinging, to me, swinging is about sex. It's not about building connections and getting to know the person and having friendships and all that kind of stuff. But poly relationships are, you, you're building, you're having some, some, something, something is there that is driving all of these entities together. Do you agree with that, Barry? I would say that I'm very much in love with multiple women. And it's not, there's not one over the other. She's my nesting partner, so we do have things together that I might not have with my other partners, like bills and some of the not so fun stuff. <laughs> but as far as um, my intimacy with the other relationships, it's very much about feelings. It's very much about love. I care about them very much. I've talked to some of my partners about uh, creating a family. Um, so. I, I will say this. I'm sorry, Barry. No, go ahead. Uh, I will say this. If to not have an emotional connection, you got to have a jaded perspective of that person or of people. Mm -hmm. now, you know, you have to have perspective. A good example is, you remember the group Two Live Crew? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marquise. Right, not the one with the cask and on his arm. He actually spent some time in Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. And he had changed his life, made his made the transition in, into Christ, and he was really focused in that area. And one of my boys had recognized him, and he started talking about his days being a two life crew. And he said, "Man, I don't even know how to talk to a woman because being in a group, women would just come up, walk up to him, just start having sex with him." Right. Or he could just snap his fingers and say, come here. Right. So over time, he developed a sort of a reason of like, oh, you know, there's a bunch of bees, that's this, that, and the other X, Y, and Z because of his the relationships he, he continuously had with women. So he didn't even know how to have an emotional connection during that time. Right. That's why some pimps can do what they do because of how they disassociate themselves from a woman or a prostitute to disassociate herself from a man, right? It's something within them that keeps them from that. But for, as Barry and, 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 and Tiffany have mentioned, it's about them having those connections. That's Sorry, important. And, and Barry, let me ask you, and is it intentional, the things that you're doing in reference to have, creating those emotional connections? Uh, very much so. I, I seek out um, being a polyamorous man i i found it 
very easy if I wanted to just hook up that that's very much a possibility for me at any point. I, it is not my priority. I'm, lo I'm looking for intentional connections with people that I care about that are hopefully long-term and hopefully going to be in my, you know, just like any relationship, you never know, you know, it, is it, is it going to last six months or is it going to last 10 years? But uh, my intention with every relationship I start is that it's going to be long-term and that it's going to be serious and that um, it's going to benefit both of us in a loving way. And, and, you know, me and the partner that I'm with is going to uh, feel loved and blessed and, and happy that we had the time together that we did. So let me jump in there for a quick second. Fred, we can't see your face. Why are you, you blurred? Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> Is that better? You're, it looks like maybe you have a, the, I don't know. I don't a have filter? a filter. I don't have a filter up or anything like that. Yeah, oh, you're yeah. just, you're blurry. Well, you can't see. Is that better? There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So one of the, one of the first things that, you have to worry about or define whether no matter what type of relationship that you're going to be in, what are your needs? You have to define that first. What do I need to be fulfilled in order to, for me to be happy? Because mm -hmm. you can't, you, even though like Barry said that, you know, he looks, you know, for this person that fulfilled this need or whatever, if you don't have those things defined, it will never, he won't know what he needs. So he, he's, the, he's done that first. He knows what he needs and he's looked for people that can fill those needs. Second, you have to understand your emotional uh, kind of timeline or, or, st or status. Mm -hmm. What type of emotional person are you? You know, do you get attached very easily? Do you detach very easily? or what because depending upon you know the person a person could have sex one time and if it's halfway decent they think they're <laughs> in love right <laughs> so, so that person loves me no they don't they just have sex so good sex if you would love the first time <laughs> hey I, I i've seen it i've seen it now they start calling a boyfriend and girl that's my man that's not your man <laughs> so so and and then you're talking about people that can come, the word is compartmentalize. That's how people are able to do the things that they do, but not necessarily fall in love, have feelings, be attached. Because for me, I am a very good, I'm very good at compartmentalizing. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, you can, I can be mad at you. Mm -hmm. You know, you did something that really got on my nerves. But if you're my person, I'm still going to cook for you. I'm still mm -hmm. going to do the things that I'm supposed to do for you. It doesn't matter about why I'm mad. But if I'm but if I'm if I have a duty for you, then that duty is supersedes for me. My emotion so I can put that in a box and still do what I'm supposed to do. So in a relationship, people that can compartmentalize they can do with one another what, whatever it is. And if in their mind, it's only this, it don't matter what they do. It's only going to be that. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of come up with an idea for yourself. What am I able to stand? What am I able to handle? And what do I need to be complete in any type of relationship before you even think about poly or mm -hmm. monogamy? That You got to take care of that business first. That's a good point. Um, we're getting a question for you, Barry. They want to know how many current partners do you have? <laughs> uh, I want to say none of your business. But... <laughs> <laughs> You're on the podcast, so you are open to questions. <laughs> uh, well, let, let me start by saying that some of them I don't see very often, but I still care about them and consider them partners. So okay. I, I will say six. Six? Barry, I, I was asked a question. Um, someone texted us to me. Um, did they all know each other and did they get along? Yep, I was. that was my next question. So you're seeing the same question. Yes. Do they know each other, Barry? That, that, is, that is not something I ever pushed. Some of them have met. 
Um, some of them get along very well. Like we hang out together. Um, two of my partners are women that are married to each other. So obviously they get along just fine. <laughs> um, so it, it depends on the partner and the situation. It's not, it's not something I ever push. But if you, you know, if you want to meet a partner, then I'm open to it. And if it's cool, then we can continue a friendship. And if it's uncomfortable, then we can just, you know, I, I, as, as far as intimacy, I like, I prefer my one-on-one time. I'm not trying to mix everybody up and, mm-hmm. you know, oh, let's, let's all be together. You know, like I'm, I'm the king of the house. I'm going to have all my women run yeah. around. Um, but but that is that is a good point that I mean we're, we're sitting here smiling but that's a good point it's not like you have this harem of women and you're having these orgies every weekend so that's not what it's about you like that one-on-one time do you have a cap like is there a cap to how many women you will date at one time and that's questions for well that's questions for Fred for Ro do y'all have like a cap if y'all were to go into a poly relationship that y'all will not exceed. I, oh, I, Go ahead. Back to the other part, I would say I that most of my partners have other partners I mean, I have a cap. as well. But um, so there's no cap for you, Barry. As far as the cap, um, it depends what the needs of the people I'm with are. For okay. example, if I had like currently. Three of the girlfriends I don't see very often. I'm fine with six. Okay. If all six of them lived here in town and wanted my attention every night, no, no I, could, I couldn't do that. <laughs> okay. So, um, it really depends on the situation. Like, what what are the needs? How much attention? Do, some people need more attention than other people. Some some people are busy, and you know, uh, we check in once a day it's really not tasking so well, I'm, I'm gonna answer that question because we have miss honor that asked the question for me if i am going to engage in a polyamory relationship i can only handle two at one time i can't handle like my my main person and one other person i don't think that i could do any more than that what about you fred what about you ro so i would i would say in ideal situations and when i say ideal um, it, it it really depends upon kind of what you all are agreeing to do in that relationship. You know, are you taking care of them? Are you, are they, everybody's responsible for themselves? Mm-hmm. So that all plays a, plays a big role into it as well. Okay. Uh, but in ideal situations, meaning that everything is taken care of, right? Mm-hmm. Don't matter. Four right. is my limit. Four. Okay. Why, why yeah. four? I need to know why that number. Well, wow. <laughs> I, I've just through experience. Okay. Through experience, I've I've just learned that if I try to spread myself out to more than four people dating openly to mm-hmm. more than four people at one time, then I start to lose control of myself. Mm. No, because you know you know your limit. Exactly. So because when you when you don't you. At the end of the day, you still have to have time for you. Right. Oh, and yeah. And if yes. I don't say that have again. Can you say time, that again? I'm just going to ask you to say that again. <laughs> say yes. that again. I say at the end of the day, you still have to have enough time for you. Yes. Very you have to have that me time, right? And so right. if you are spread out so thin that you don't have enough me time, mm-hmm. you want to then feel like you're you, you, you're giving something up like at, at the end of the day if I don't have enough time to do the basic things that fulfill me mm-hmm. then I can't help pour into someone else because I'm not about just being there I, ha- right. I, I I'm a person that I have to I love to give I, I love to replenish um I love to compliment and if I don't have that within me, how can I give it to someone else? No, those are good points. You're bringing a lot of good points about um, taking inventory on self. 
first. Yes. You, yes. You're giving a lot of points about what do I need? What can I handle? What are my boundaries? What are my, what can I do first? So you're, we're talking about taking self-ownership of what, what are my limitations? What can I handle? And then yes. making a decision on what relationship is right for me based on the other parties. So I think that, that's very mature to do. Have you been married before, Fred? I was married for 16 years before, yes. Okay, was that a monogamous relationship or a polyamorous? Yes, it was, yes, it was monogamous. It was monogamous, okay. Yes. So yeah, you're taking a lot of inventory on self before you're making these kind of decisions. So, okay, Ro, you were starting mm -hmm. to say something. Do you, do you have a cap? I said I would probably do two at the max. And then that's just because, number one, I'm not that chick that's going to call you every day. I'm not going <laughs> to text you. Some people be like, well, why you ain't checked in? Well, like, what was I going to say to you? Like, But, Perfect. like, if we, we're in person, I'll talk to you every day, all day. But I'm just not going to pick up the phone and call you. Um, I like my space, like I said. So today I may want to be bothered with you. But then tomorrow it's like, don't talk to me. So... <laughs> It so, just depends. But, so, but Ro, did you get? But Ro, I want to ask Ro, did she get her question answered about how to deal with the emotions? Because I was really. Oh yeah, I did because sure. like I did, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because when I was introduced to the lifestyle of having like multiple people, I was introduced to a different side of it, and I guess I was introduced to the swinger side of it, and not the poly side of it. And mm -hmm. then once I started to like get educated on polyamorous, I learned that, um, yes, people are doing this shit the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It's more so about sex mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. technically speaking, if you're going to do it and call it a marriage, I'm not just saying a relationship, but a marriage, like everybody should be taken care of. You ain't supposed to have no broke person trying to take care of you. I mean, um, you're being in a poly relationship poly relationship with them because he's not going to be number one or she is not going to be able to satisfy you financially um emotionally spiritually i mean it's so many different aspects to it and people think that it's just about oh i can be with two men or i can be with two women like no if i'm gonna do it the man that i'm gonna do it with he gonna be able to take care of me her her whoever like i'm not See, that's a whole with different that's a whole different category that i would love to <laughs> get into a little bit later but that's okay. a whole other Jamal got a question there. Jamal got a question okay go ahead so, so I got two questions too I don't know why okay. you asked me if I have a cat that's one because I I do have a cat you okay. said you was monogamous so yeah what but dating is different so I'm either I'm either I'm either in a relationship or I'm single okay and what's the difference I'm clean or I'm unclaimed and right now I'm unclaimed Right. So he can date as many as he wants. Whatever. Well, right. I can. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, Let's go ahead and get right? into it. Let's. So, I'm gonna ask this question because you monogamous. You said you're single. Single. So, right. So, but dating. You're different. You're dating I, do you date multiple women at the same time? It has depend on the season. And do they know about each other? No. Will you tell every woman you're if dating? If someone says, "Are you dating?" I say, "Yeah, I'm dating." I'm okay. very transparent about okay. it. Okay. So you're right? truthful. Okay. Well, I'm very transparent. It's like you're dating someone. Yeah, I'm, I'm dating one or two other people, right? Okay. But again, it's about energy. I, I don't, uh, certain times of the year, I may not be that busy. I may meet this person no month. I meet a lot of women as I, in my travel. Girl. So you know, what's your slow season? <laughs> it, 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 it depends on women. Right now, I'm not dating. And it's intentional. Okay. okay. Right? I intentionally am just not dating, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, but if I was, you know, I meet you. On, I meet you on Friday. I met somebody a week from now. I'm getting to know everybody. So is it like cuffing season, summer? I'm all, all out there season. Like, nah, nah, nah. I need nah. to know what summer, winter, yeah. spring, and fall is. Nah, <laughs> what I mean by season, I mean the season where I'm at at this point. <laughs> I know. Right? That, that's all I mean, right? But, I'm discussing with you. <laughs> you know, but um, ironically, I meet more people when it's warmer. I don't know, but but I mean, but I have I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Is there a right or wrong way to be in, a, in any type of relationship? Because I heard yes. you say that people are doing poly relationships incorrectly, right? And I, I got my own thought, but I want to hear you, you guys' response first. Yes. Is and there I'm, a wrong way to do it? I don't I'm, I'm think gonna, there's a right way. 
I think it depends on the individuals and the and the relationship to decide what their dynamics are going to be. That's my. So guess. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this according to the original plan of what poly relationship was based upon. It was not for sex. It was basically people didn't even have sex with each one of their wives. Every person brought something different to the table. Some wives was economic. Some wives were homemakers. Some wives were reproductive. It depends on what that man's need and his community needed at that moment. But because over time, just like with everything, it gets screwed and misconstrued. And so, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's been taken into its own thing. And so that's why I said it's done wrong, not necessarily mm -hmm. meaning that your idea of it or my idea of it is wrong, but according to how it was originally done. That was, that was a societal norm during that time, right? Right, so, right, so is, right. So is it safe to say if they're doing it based upon their man's needs or their community needs, emotional attachment is the last thing on the list? Right, but that's not, once again, when a man had a concubine, he didn't go in there and he didn't lay with that concubine all night. He didn't go on dates with that concubine. He didn't, you know what I'm saying, do none of that. It right. was basically for reproductive purposes or for whatever that concubine's need was at the moment. Once her job or her, her was served, he was gone. He wasn't sitting in there trying to lay and play, get to know, do none of that. He couldn't even tell you probably her mama name or any of that. It was she right. served a purpose in that community. Right. So I, once her job was done, it, it was done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to chime in for just a second. I, th I think that's one. Um, words are so important, but I think that's the difference. Yeah. Polygamy and polyamory. Yeah. Right. Polygamy, right. Right. She's talking about polygamy. Person? Polygamy okay. is a man with multiple do wives. Do the things yes. do for you. It doesn't yeah. matter about why I'm mad. But if I'm, but if I'm, if I have a duty for you, then mm -hmm. that duty. Why I'm mad. But if I'm, but if I'm, if I have a duty for you, then mm -hmm. that duty. Why I'm mad. But if I'm, but if I'm, if I have a duty for you, then. Is repeating or doing something? What was that? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> he'll he'll be back. He'll be back. There you go, Fred. We 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 lost you there for a second. Okay. Well, can I, can I, while he's out, can I chime in for a second? No, go ahead. No, yeah, no one's out. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. So, so we, we have to really, when we, when we, well, I'm, first, I'm just going to answer the original question. And the reason why the, the reason why the answer is, can you do it wrong? Yes. And the reason why you can do it wrong is because number one, when people enter in any type of relationship, number one, you get together and you figure out why you're going into that relationship. Then all of a sudden, your feelings change. And all the time, let's be honest, do you always tell the other person that your feelings change? Therefore, you operate now outside of what the original plan was in that relationship. And so if you don't communicate openly and honestly and be transparent, about your feelings and how they have changed at that point in time, you're operating out of pocket in that, right. in, in those relationships. And so people do that all the time, especially in the community that we all know and, and we all know the swinger community and the, you know, BDSM and polyamorous community, they're all kind of mixed up. Right. And yeah. so, and people don't always get educated you know, about the different levels of this or that. So mm -hmm. the person who is of knowledge has a responsibility to make sure that everyone stays even keeled on the same page. And if I'm the guy, then it's my, I'm taking on that responsibility to make sure that everybody is on the same page. We're all speaking the same language. We're all saying the same things so that there is no ambiguity, you know, when it comes, you know, to us, understanding how we're operating so if you're not operating in that vein to me you're operating out of pocket and out of order hey fred so yes. you this, bro. Yes. Yeah, relationships are constantly changing people are constantly changing the mm -hmm. dynamics and how we interact with each other are constantly yes. changing right yes 
how do you adapt to that with multiple people? Because again, I, I, we jokingly mm-hmm. say it's seasons, but yes. we go through different seasons in our lives where- Absolutely. But with, with how I needed you, I needed this woman to love me five years ago is not the way I need her to love me. Absolutely. Today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just for those things. Okay. So, so the 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 way you the way the same way you would do that. Um. And, well, well, let me let me say the re the one of the reasons why I think my marriage didn't work is because we didn't continually evolve with each other. Mm-hmm. So that 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 answers that question is you know we're not the same people at twenty five that we were at forty five. Right. We're not the same people. So therefore, if I don't check in. Again, that's my mental health, you know, going, you know, coming to coming to the front. You have to check in with that person. Am I meeting your needs, babe? Is mm-hmm. there anything that you need that I'm not fulfilling for you? And you have to do the same thing for her. And if you are not checking in, if you're not making sure that you're you 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 both are being fulfilled, then there that those voids are gonna get larger and larger and larger. And therefore, you are going to kind of be missing each other. You can you can be right beside each other, but miss each other at the same time, because she's on one page and you are on another page. Go ahead. So my question is, and this is for everybody that that is open to a poly relationships. Um, that check in. Do you mm-hmm. do it at the same time with everyone? Like, hey, my my yeah. nesting partner. Like Barry has a nesting partner. What are your needs? Am I fulfilling those needs? Am I lacking in anything? You're having that conversation, right? With his nesting partner. Do you go from there and talk to each partner at the same time? Or when when do you have these check-ins? Because I, I believe that's a good that's a good thing, but when do you have these check-ins? Is it by need? How do you know that it's a need? Is it at the same time as the other? Like when is when are these check-ins? Well, for me, for, go ahead, Barry, go ahead. I, I think that's where establishing open and honest communication from the beginning mm-hmm. plays a huge part. And I think, especially in polyamory, it's, it's hugely important that there's always open and honest communication. And some of the conversations are hard. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Are really hard. Um, but it's also one of the beautiful things about polyamory is because in general, it the love style is set up to have open and honest communication and not have your you know secret fetish about your your husband's best friend that you really wish you could you know no nah, you can tell <laughs> straight up you know hey i think your friend's hot or whatever right. and you know one of the beautiful things about polyamory but i th- i think yeah, and back to the original question that I, I, I don't feel like really got answered as far as, you know, is there a wrong way? I don't necessarily think there's a wrong way if you're in agreement with your partners. Mm-hmm. But I do see a lot of people nowadays, polyamory, BDSM, it's all gotten very popular. And there's a lot of people using it for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. I, I am a dom with some of my partners. And I see a lot of, especially young men, using Dom as a way to like, oh, I could be controlling and tell a woman what to do and, and be somewhat abusive. And it's okay because I'm a Dom. Right. No, that is not the that is not the purpose of it. And the same with polyamory. The purpose of it is not that you can just sleep with whoever you want to. And, you yeah. know, I don't care what my partner thinks. It's, you know. So it's going to get taken advantage of. I, I, Barry, I'm going to say, so, man. Um, Tiffany. Yeah, um, but, um, Fred Jamal was just speaking. What were you saying, Jamal? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Jamal. I'm sorry. Uh, Barry, I think, man, one of the reasons why those lines are bur- blurred, um, this is a, a an American thing. And what I mean by that is if we look at how media has shaped the minds of, of, of people in reference to relationships in general, right? And what I mean by, like, for example, it's popular to to have multiple women or or live the hot single life. It's popular, but it's not popular even in a poly or monogamous relationship, whatever, to have a healthy relationship, right? To have an open and an honest and and a, and, and that type of relationship, right? Mm-hmm. It's popular to say this is how many women I had, right? <laughs> it's popular to say, well, girl, you know, I was with I used to date this boy, I date his cousin and. 
whatever. <laughs> and I got them for for this, that, and the other. But there's, but again, that's going back to what you mentioned was very important to you was having that connection, right? Mm -hmm. So having the connection is impossible. Is impossible? Is it? Is impopular because having a connection means what? As Fred said earlier, having an inventory of yourself. Mm -hmm. Ro, Ro definitely explained that she had had to take deep inventory for herself and what's important to her. Knowing the day I want to talk, tomorrow I don't. Right? right. I can only handle two. Right. 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 And being honest with that. And, right. and I, I think there's so many different levels that we can get deep on why this is so hard, much harder in America. <laughs> I mean, one. You know, in Europe, like nudity and sexuality and mm -hmm. sex, and all that is very much more open and mm -hmm. not, you know, here in the United States, it's closeted and you're not supposed to speak about it. There's something mm -hmm. you sneak around and do, you mm -hmm. know, you're not supposed to do that. It's bad and wrong. So people are already coming from a mindset of being raised that like sex is bad and wrong. Um, and I, yeah. I love that point, but... <laughs> Fred, you were about to say something. What were you about to say? Or did well, we pass that moment? <laughs> I, I'll just I'll just say this. Um, you just have to. Well, you, you the question was when do you check in? That's what the question was asked. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And again, you do that by getting to know your partner. If your partner starts to exhibit behaviors that mm -hmm. are not consistent with what she what she or he, you know used to exhibit or whatever you just notice something that's off you're checking in it could be something as simple as hey you know i just noticed you know blah 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 you know and that's not something you usually do you know you know is, is there something else is there something wrong or is there something you know you want to talk to me about it could be as simple as that right right, right. and you have to you just have to know who you're talking to who you're dealing with and that's about not jumping into saying you're in a polyamorous relationship just because she's hot you know just because yeah. you know she looks good or he looks good you got to get to know the people on the ground level as as a young as as, as i like to call it you know you got to start in the mud and you got to get it out of the mud you know you got to grow with each other you know learn the habits of each other learn you know how you know that person moves and as you learn about those people you you know about the people that's in your life that you want to be intimate with you are able then to know when you need to check in it's not a schedule you ha you have to do it when you feel it's just necessary to check in or if they tell you hey i'm not feeling so good i'm not feeling right about this right. i'm not feeling be this right open now. to right. what they have to say and don't just shut it shut it down yeah. Yeah. And I think I think everybody sounds like agrees that it's on an individual basis as needed. Um, we had a question. Why do they have the title of partners instead of people that I care about that I also have sex with? So for the person that asked the question, I'm a little confused. Aren't they the same thing or are they not the same thing? People for me, to me yeah, to me, it's the same <laughs> thing. So, so um, and no offense to whoever asked the question. I, I, I didn't look to see the name. I'm sorry. Um, but is everybody your partner in this relationship? Barry, Fred, Ro, when y'all have these poly relationships, is everybody your partner? Is everybody your girlfriend, boyfriend? Like, is there an, a hierarchy to, like, is your nesting partner, nesting, nesting partner the queen bee and the rest are, like, what is, how does that? Well, go? let me start. Well, if I'm in a, if I am in a BDSM anything, then, I'm not necessarily in a relationship with them necessarily. So you're throwing another relationship it, dynamic in there. We're, we're talking about poly, and now you're you're adding the BDSM. Those are two different. But what I'm just saying, well, because because people, because the reason why I'm asking that is because people will say that's my partner. You know, that's my partner. That's my dynamic partner, or whatever. Okay. And sometimes those terms are interchangeable that people use. So okay. you have to be careful because they i'm not the people say if they're if, if they're my partner then that also must mean i'm in a relationship with them that's not true that's not okay. that's not necessarily true and so we got to make sure that we are making sure that we define the terms as they are and just not lumping those things together yeah. if i am a relate if i am in a relationship with someone they are also my partner though 
but that comes first. If I'm in a relationship with them first, then yes, they are my partner. But if if just because we doing something, that don't necessarily make them my partner. So just that because you're having sex, going out huh? on a regular occasion. So just because you're having sex or going out on a regular occasion doesn't mean you're your partner. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or, or you know, some people say that's my lifestyle partner. You ever heard of that? Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but so when you if you say that, people assume that you're in a long term thing. No, that's just somebody I go to a party with. <laughs> right. That's, like your that's, that's, that's my partner. That's my partner. Right. Yeah. Right. But but again, but somebody from the outside that don't know mm-hmm. will assume that that's my long term, you know, person, and that's Got that's it. completely from the from the truth. So Barry, how do you differentiate between your I, nesting partner, your main partner, and your? I think it's different for different um, polyamorous couples. I think a lot of a lot of couples come into polyamory wanting to broaden their relationship. I came in and met her as a polyamorous man, and she comes from a swinger background, um, and we discussed it, and I. Um, we agreed that, like, I don't like hierar- hierarchical polyamory. Mm-hmm. That's in one's somebody's number one, somebody else's number two. Somebody, I don't. My partners, I treat them equal. They, they're everybody's just important to me. Yes, we have bills together, stuff like that. So that I was just about it. to ask, at how can they be equal if you live with one of them? Bam, because uh, somebody's doing more financial. Like you can't ask this woman y'all to pay have half more your of a rent and then the sit here and say, "Oh, but I feel the same way about you that I but, feel about somebody else." Because this woman, you have financial gain out of this woman as opposed to this woman. Y'all live so together, have, y'all. Keep right? Them. She fixes your food, you fix her food, so she's <laughs> not on the same level oh. as the next chick. Because the next chick is just cuddling with you. Yeah, or she's one, one reason I look at it that way is not just for myself. I do not ever want my partner, whether she's my nesting partner or not, to treat another person in her life like he is second. That's not fair if you're doing that. I, and some people, that's that's the way they that's the way they operate. To me, it's not fair. I don't think I don't like it. I think it's kind of ugly. I am never going to treat one of my partners like they're not second or third. Or if, if you're a partner of mine, you're important to me and you're just as important as anybody else in my life. And, and so, the, the, the whole paying bills together ain't, ain't fun. I mean, if anybody <laughs> else wants to join in on that, you come on and help. <laughs> So I guess for me, so, and I'm not, I'm playing devil's advocate. Don't think that my questions or my statements are me saying something is wrong because it's not. Uh, this is me just playing devil's advocate. I'm reading okay. people's questions. So, so, okay. So for me, when my husband and I were um, considering a polyamory relationship, we had someone, a young lady that we were interested in and she insisted on having to being equal to me, but I'm the wife. So to me and him, she ain't, no other woman is ever going to be equal to me because I'm the wife. I live with you. I had his kids. We play bills together. We do everything together. I see him on a, a regular basis. So for him and I dating another, uh, dating a woman together or dating a woman or him dating a woman, whatever, there's no equal to me. So that was something that we decided as a husband and wife, that that was not something that we were going to, that was not something we were going to do. Now, were we going to treat that person as less than? No, she would still get our respect. She would still get her time with him. She would still have, you know, the privileges of them, you know, dating, whatever that is. But you're not equal to me, boo. You, I'm wife. <laughs> you know what? I've invested my life and my 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 signing of my signature you will never be equal to me but that doesn't mean that he's going to treat her less than he's still going to respect her he's still going to make time for her he's still going to you know do whatever you know that was is in our our boundaries and our whatever but you so, can't you can never be equal to me because so, i am i am his wife and so here's what i would say to that is 
that that's a dangerous uh, position to be in. And the, and the reason why that's a dangerous position to be in because that's really competition. No. You you don't no. for no, I mean, no for not her. For us, it wasn't, not for you. No, no, no. But not yes. for <laughs> yes. But so, you know, but a, a person that feel that wants a certain position mm -hmm. and they don't get it. Yes. Then you have to ask yourself, so what are their options? Are they mm -hmm. settling? Are they gonna go with it until they get tired of it? And then what? Yeah, and well, she, so, she decided that that's not, she did not want that. <laughs> and so that's not what she wanted. And, and, and that, was, that was fine. He, he was able to, uh, our agreement, he can date another woman separately. He can, you know, go out with her. He can talk to her in separate conversations as long as I knew about it. But if we had like a family commitment or he wants to go out on a date with another, you know, the other young lady, he's going to talk to me about it first and we're going to say okay yeah no we're cool nothing family going on nothing we've already planned so that's what I mean by we're not equal because if him and I have commitments those commitments come first it trumps everything so she wasn't willing to do that and that was okay but we have dated you know or he's dated other women or whatever where that that person was okay with it because they knew that I was the wife and he was the husband and we have those commitments that we have to talk about first before I can go out on a date with you, before we can spend time with each other. I have to check in first yeah, with my mate, listener. with my legal mate. <laughs> so and, uh, yeah, I think it works better when people don't live together. Like it's easy for you to have six different women if all y'all aren't living together. It's easy for you to have two different women if all y'all aren't living together. Because I don't care what nobody says. I'm a woman that have been for a long, long, long time. <laughs> and I'm not an insecure woman. It's just the fact that every woman wants her own space. Yes. And for me to have to go to Melinda and say, hey, can we put green curtains up in the living room? That shit is not working. You understand? <laughs> so even if, even if they agree to do it, somebody's not being honest and open and happy about what's going on. Because we all have our individual wants and needs as a woman to make a house a home. And so for me to have to go to another woman to get permission to do certain things in a home that's supposed to be ours, it's kind of like, nah, because then I'm not able to make that my space. So you can't, you so would have so, a poly relationship, but you can't live under the same roof. I'm as not living before. under the same roof with another Sorry. woman. Like okay. you can have 10 different women. But mm -hmm. I'm not living with none of y'all. You understand what I'm saying? It's not going down. You need your so, own space. So, I need my so, own space. So one of the one of the things that I think sometimes, you know, it was talking about the living under one roof. This is what I was getting to last time when I said about the financial part and all mm -hmm. of that. So because because that can of worms is if you have a person who is then taking care of the concubine or whatever you want to call it, whatever <laughs> you have for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> then it's his job to make sure that he only brings in the women who can operate under you know the that space that he's provided why well, bring so, in someone who so you're who talking about a hierarchy it. situation in that situation well, not necessarily a hierarchy situation but if if Susie <laughs> If Susie is, she is cracking up over can't operate in that space, <laughs> then why bring Susie in? You know what I'm saying? You have to be careful about who you bring in okay, to your so, space. Well, we, we've been skipping over Jamal for a second. Go ahead, Jamal. Oh, uh, I'm like, sorry. I, 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 I have a question, right? I thought traditionally the women found the woman to come into the home. Not it, necessarily. Not, not, hold on. I'm just not, saying. I thought not always. Because, Ro, I'm going to say this now. I, I've been saying this for the longest. A lot of times when guys will say, man, you know, I run this place. This is my home. And I say, bro, you didn't put them sheets on your bed, hang them towels up in that in that bathroom and put them curtains up. You ain't do nothing. That's our house. <laughs> right? All you got is a chair with a TV. That's it. <laughs> you ain't got nothing else. She just lets you <laughs> pretend that you run this place. So, Ro, I understand what you're saying, but bro, I, I, I I'm being honest. It was, I was finding Fred. I find it very hard to believe a dude could go find 
several women to bring into a home with a woman that she's not going to want to make that husband. Oh, you would be surprised when I say no, you it's, would it's be surprised hard, what it's these hard. chicks go it's for nowadays. I'm t- I, I was it about is, to say the same thing, Ro. These it women- is these women going for any and everything nowadays. Like yeah. they don't understand what they're doing, and to me, a lot they of them are doing it because men. it's like they dating multiple men. No, no, no. And, don't, no, and don't I feel say like that, don't they're say they doing don't it. understand. No, I, I feel like they're do doing it because they're doing it because I can't beat them, so I'm a joint. They've been getting cheated on by every man oh. that they've been with. So because they've been getting cheated on by every man they've been with, they like, well, fuck it. Let's just do it together. Exactly. So it's because security a lot of like, any, it's security well, and companionship. It's more so of insecurity than what you that's what I'm saying. Like, if I can get you to, and then it goes back to this too, and since we're on this monogamy thing. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we're doing poly, but I'm just saying we talk about monogamy. It's, so no, it's about monogamy thing. tonight. It's supposed yeah. to be about monogamy tonight. <laughs> but me as a man, okay, me as a woman, fuck that. Me as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm talking to four dating four different dudes, and I mean not having sex, but just literally going out on dates, getting to know different people, right? The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to eliminate, you know, who it is that I really want to spend time with or whatever. So what I've been finding is that men will date 10 different women. If one don't act right, they're like, fuck that bitch. You know what I'm saying? I got nine other ones that's going to act right. So, you know I what I'm saying? Them. Fuck them. <laughs> So they keep moving on and moving on. They're never going to stick around long enough to get some type of substance to see if they even want to what type of relationship they want to be in because they're so more focused. They're so more focused on like, what is it I can get in the moment? What is this person can do for it? It's like, it's more selfishness now than it is. The, the guys anything. don't agree with you, bro. You're not, you're not, right, you're not you know talking about a polyamorous you know relationship type with me? person. You just, Listen, you just, you, you know, know why y'all, about not, y'all like, not agree with me? Go ahead, Fred. Let him talk, bro. Let him talk. Let him, let him say what he got to say. Go ahead, Fred. <laughs> you, you're, you're not, I, I don't think you're talking about a polyamorous type person. You're just talking about some dude that's out there just doing his thing, just with all willy nilly. That's a completely different mindset. That's completely oh, yeah. different. I said that, but I said that's what they're using as an excuse. It's to no, do no, no, but, no. To but do. what I'm saying is that's yeah. not the mindset of a true polyamorous really. person. Yeah, right. but that's, that's not the problem. The mindset. A lot mindset of these is people are different. not true because they don't understand the popularity. Just like nobody understood what spirituality was two years ago, but now everybody's on zodiac signs and you what's your that's, third house? And, that's not a you person know. who's really well, educated I mean, honestly, in that world. Honestly, a lot of and I get what you're saying, Ro, because a lot of a lot of men use polyamory uh, polyamory as an excuse to cheat. Yes. And, right. That's and what that, I'm saying. That has that's yes. the one thing about polyamory that has turned me off to it is that mm-hmm. men you men and women, I'm not gonna say just men, that men and women, I'm sorry, I keep getting stuck there at men, sorry, use polyamory as a reason to cheat. So they're going out saying that I'm a polyamorous man, but their wife ain't polyamorous. Or right. their and then they're gonna say she can't don't know with. nothing about the other yeah. woman. So a lot of people but, use but polyamory. Then, but then if it's like that, you have to know that's not the type of guy who's really truly polyamorous. But okay, not. so He's this is what we're cheater. trying to tell you. That's different. So that's a different guy. This is what we're trying to tell you as a woman. Mm-hmm. The dating game is different on our yeah. side it than is. it is on the guy side. That's on true. the guy side of the situation, oh. it is it is definitely on his on his side. I, yeah, I it's, would, it's definitely it, leaning toward more as the guy side. Not you know how many side. men I know that say that they're swingers or they're polyamorous and their wives and their girlfriends don't, aren't can't aren't sleep with anybody else with them. Yes, but, but or open I know some women out here doing some 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 guys. exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's it's, it's not a man thing. They, they're it's, doing some they doing some, job, doing. some some wild tooky stuff too now. So that's Fred, true. What Burry guy say? You're right, I, and that's why I, I apologize. I for I'm not saying I'm right. not saying it it's all. I'm just saying I that's am a awesome. woman. That's I nice. can only speak from a woman's point of view yeah. in this dating game. I but in this that. dating game, as a woman, I respect right, that. This shit is one sided. Okay, that's the only reason why I don't know if I will try polyamory again because my experience, unfortunately, is that polyamory is used to cheat. And yep. to be an excuse for why you're dealing with other women. 
And yep. that is the only reason why I I'm ha- I might have a hard time trying it again is because it is abused and misused. It's and I right. don't want to be I, monogamous because they all cheat. Like I, they, like was, I've never, I've only known, like out of all the men that I know, literally, I can only say about five of them openly I, and honestly are not cheating on their women in heaven. Well, so when we started this tonight, I said that I probably got into polyamory for the wrong reasons. And the reason I say that is because I got tired of getting cheated on. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. Hey, Thanks. open and honest sounds way better to me than the fucking lying and the cheating. Just go ahead and sleep with the dude. Get you some D. <laughs> and I'll be happy for you. And, the, you know, and, and I'll do my thing, too. Yeah. So I, w- I would say that it is not one-sided this man. And I would say that my first, um, other than my now nesting partner, my first polyamorous relationship was with a woman that claimed to And her husband was perfectly fine with her dating other women. Had no idea she was dating a man. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. not as one-sided as you think it is. No, we know it's not. We know it's not. We're just, we're talking from a women's point of view. It isn't. We we know that it goes both ways. We've heard that women cheat better than men because we we think about it. Y'all men, y'all think with your with your other head. Y'all don't think. Well, men don't. Men don't. Your, your head on it, your is scientifically, <laughs> it is scientifically proven that women are better at multitasking than men. Also, we don't pay attention to details. Right. Like, you're not cheating better. You're just paying attention to the details. Right. You're, just, you're just hiding the things. That it might be our not, next I, one. Who that's cheated? all it is. You knew, you knew it was five hairs on the bathroom sink, and you better get them five hairs. He missed that one hair behind the toilet. He ain't thinking that far. You think, I better clean up the whole place. He looked right. like everything looks good. You're right. Not doing you okay. More detail over it. okay. We that might be our next our next episode. Who cheats yeah. better? Man or women? This is that will be explosive. So, oh, so let me <laughs> ask you this then. I have a question. This is my question. How many people do you know are in successful polyamorous relationships? And, and if you were to do a percentage, let's do a percentage. How many people do you know are in successful polyamorous relationships versus um monogamous and i'm talking marriage okay okay so you you probably ain't gonna like my answer okay because mine's my my trip you, you might not like my answer but i'm gonna say 30 40 percent of monogamous marriages are happy and i say that because there is so much infidelity cheating and so forth yeah. going on in my circle right now me included is that There is so much going on in monogamous relationships where people are not happy. And so they're going out here and they're cheating where they could possibly talk to their mate and be honest and say, hey, I need to have multiple partners and let's try to have an open poly swinger relationship, whatever it is that he, he or she needs. So I'm going to say when it comes to happy monogamous relationships, my, my percentages is low based on people that I know that are married in my circle. Um, and I would say out of polyamorous relationships that I know in my circle, I would probably say about 70% are happy because are they're they, happy. Are they 10 years or longer? Um, now that I don't know, I'll be asking okay. people how long right. been just, just All right. Yeah, so I can't, oh. but I do know people that are, are in polyamory relationships that have been together 20 plus years and it's working great and they are happy. Mm-hmm. And I know monogamous relationships that are happy and they've been in it 20 years. But in my circle right now, people that I know, even just people social media that I follow, monogamous relationships are under attack right now and they're not happy and it's because there's a lot of cheating and infidelity going on so that's just my experience that monogamous relationships are not winning right now that's my experience right now in my life i I would like to add to that that i think so many more people would be open to polyamory but typically it's the male insecurity because I have so many men tell me that, oh, I could never be polyamorous. 
That's because they don't want to share their their woman with a man. When they Plus turn, them. they don't want to share their woman with a man. They, They'll share it with a woman. Them. They, they turn around the next day and they're flirting with some chick at the bar. And if they had the opportunity, they would. But the whole idea that their woman might be with somebody else, a man, mm. they're, they're okay with the women, but not not men. They can't. Mm -hmm. They're too insecure of the idea that some other man is going to replace them or be better mm -hmm. than them or whatever. Yeah. So, so the reason why that is, and uh, is because number one, they have not spent and did the work on the emotional side. Okay, they they I'm don't have that connection. Evaluation, Fred. I'm yes. sorry, I am loving this self evaluation. <laughs> I'm loving yes. it. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, you 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 when you, when you don't have that connection, that bond, that intimacy, it your relationship is rocky, and all it takes is one great sex session, and it it, it could be over for you, bro. You know, <laughs> so if you don't have anything other than sex in your relationship. Do you really have a relationship? You know, ask yourself that. If that's all you have, that's what's going for you. That's what's keeping her around. Bruh, you don't have her. You know what I'm saying? You don't have her because what happens when one day you, 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 Jimmy don't rise to the occasion. Jimmy don't rise to the occasion. If it happens once, it's going to happen again. And when it keeps happening, she's going to start looking elsewhere because that's the only reason she's there, bruh. So when you don't, invest the time in other things to secure that relationship oh, then care. the sex can be sex can be you know that if you know you did the work if you know your relationship is solid it don't matter if king dingling comes in and do what he do she don't she might need some, some time to heal mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, your relationship's still gonna be there. She's gonna be like, "Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. You know, but my man is over here, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm going home with him. I'm going to King Dingling because it's yeah. Yeah. Home you like it. Come on, what's yeah. your percentage? What's your percentage? You ask the question. What's your all right, percentage? for my percentage? All right, I'm gonna be very honest. I don't know anyone who's ever been in a poly relationship that has lasted longer than five years. Oh, boo. Right. Boo you. Um, I, <laughs> but guess what, though? In the same breath, I can turn around and say the men, and I'm, only, I'm going, this is going to be crazy. The men that I know that I, these are partners, right? My, not partners, but my partners, right? So yeah. my homeboys, these dudes have been married or in their relationship with their, their wife or who, wife in relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend dynamic. 20 years, right? And monogamous and, relationships. Right. Now, the, there's another small percentage. I have multiple group of men. They either married or they've been in long-term relationships that's leading to marriage, right? This okay. might be a very small percentage of them. The, only, the number one complaint they had, and then I'm going to talk about the women, not getting enough sex from their wife or their girl. Okay, so that's my second yeah. question. Out of, these, out of these, these men that have been in long-term relationships, 10 plus years, Relationships, married and and partnered. You, you know what they? How many of them what, cheated? You know what they tell me they do? How many of them cheated? Don't don't avoid the question. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it real, right? I can say if out of twenty men, because brothers talk, right? Mm -hmm. I can say out of be honest, be honest. I'm be, I'm being very honest, right? Okay. If I was to say out of twenty out of the twenty men I know, because we had some very candid conversations, mm -hmm. I would probably say five right now let me let me flip it to the women that if i was to go through some women i really know most have never been married right have been married or divorced so the numbers in reference to to say out of another 20 women just hypothetically of being in a happy marriage or they even if this it's their second marriage i'll count that we're looking at maybe 30 percent right mm -hmm. But they're all single. They're all single. So you don't have no married female friends right now? I have some, but we're oh. talking about 30%. Okay. Right? Everyone else, and those are the ones that are happy. Right? right? The other ones are still out looking to be with someone and be happy. Now, some are in relationships that are growing and developing, right? But you know what they never complain about? They don't never complain that their man don't give them no loving. 
But the dudes are complaining that their women don't give them. They the literally said, not get enough sex. The men they not literally said to me the other day, some of them said, since we've made this an official relationship, I can't get none. Oh, wow. So, okay. So I have another question. So out of that, out of the 20 men that are in these 10 plus relationships, are all of them monogamous relationships? Yes. Okay. What about the females? Is it all re- the ones that are 30%? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're monogamous. They're monogamous. Right. Okay. But the other women are looking. Right. To the, but the other women I know who've been poly or have multiple mm-hmm. partners, they, even the guy, they never last. Right. Okay. So it I sounds mean, like it's, it's, it's experience. Each one of us has a different experience with monogamy and. But and I think, I think this is the thing. I'm, I'm and Fred, I kind of want, my, my bro, I kind of want to build off you. I think regardless okay. of everything, again, we do not focus on what it is to be in a relationship and to be an intentional. It doesn't matter what, what type it is. One, this is, this is how I break it down. One, are you happy with yourself? Can you love yourself? Right? That's mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Two, what's the relationship dynamic with your family? You got some childhood trauma that may be keeping you from being in a happy relationship to be able to love yourself and, and accept yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. and if you did, did you go to therapy to deal with it? Mm-hmm. Right? Because mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. another point. Even if you didn't have any childhood, th- did you go to therapy just to make sure the bubble's in the center? Just to make sure everything is good with you. Right? Mm-hmm. And then the mm-hmm. last part, is what is a loving behavior for you? And, mm-hmm. and oftentimes, what is loving behavior for you and your partner? And are you willing to learn how to love them and them to learn how to love you as things mm. change and you evolve, mm. right? Yes. If you can do those things, you're yes. a master now. I don't have the energy to do it with multiple women. I'm going to be honest, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say something. One thing about Barry, I can agree. I have female friends. I have a lot of female friends that it's like, hey, I'm trying to go to art gallery. You want to go? Let's go. Mm -hmm. I want to go to movies. You want to go? Right? Not necessarily every relationship I've ever been in, that woman could fulfill every interest I had. But they've been comfortable. You know, I have male friends, female friends that I'm not doing nothing with. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to hang with your girl. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But when the cheating and all those things come in, I don't give a damn if it's King Ding Ling, um, Susie, Susie, whoever, that's got something to do with that person. Right. It has nothing to do with you. Yes, yes. And that is that's true. Me. That's, that's I'm, I'm big true. on loyalty. Like, I could fuck the faithfulness. I'm big on loyalty. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I rock with you, I rock with you. Mm-hmm. Fuck, like you said, if King Dingling come along, okay, he can come along and he's going to be there for the moment. But at the end of the night, I'm coming. What else you bring into the table? What you? What else you bring into the table? Yeah, like that's my biggest thing. Fuck How come all people the want to ask that question? Why is it? Why is why is that a hard question to ask, Tiffany? I uh-huh. see. Get, I see, especially women get upset if a man asks that question. Ooh. Oh, oh, Rhoda are, left me in the middle of this I, question. Rhoda left me that, with this that, question by myself. <laughs> whoa, because that's a that's a that's a question right there. I don't know if we got enough time tonight for that. Yeah, but, we, uh, don't. Hey, we, we don't. We don't. We that's a question right there. I'm telling I'll come you. Back another week. <laughs> Go ahead, Jamal. Go ahead, Jamal. Ask that question. Ask the question again. Okay, why is it? an issue for, for someone to say, what do you bring to the table? Now, we can rephrase it any way you want to to make it sound good, right? What, uh-huh. what qualities do what qualities um, do you possess that would make this a great relationship? I can say it that way. Right. This is what I'm saying, the same thing. What you bring to the table? And I ain't right. talking about some money. Who are you? Right, what, right, what do you right. Need me? Take care of me. Right. right. Jamal, yeah. Jamal, our next um, our next uh podcast one, two, three is June 26th. You done put the question out there. You're gonna join us next next month, June 26th at eight o'clock. I can, I can come back because thank you, mind. thank you, thank you. We have run out of time, so I'm just gonna ask you real quick monogamy is that the only way to be, be happy? That was the question, that was the thing. Is that the only way to have a successful relationship? Which you, you say, Jamal, you done heard a couple sides. Which you for you has your has your answer changed? I, I, I don't think I don't think, think my 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 perspective has changed. I think the best way to have a to have a successful relationship, regardless, is one what works for you. That's one, one. Mm-hmm. and then what works for you and your partner or partners, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Having that open, clear communication, 
open, clear expectations, mm -hmm. being intentional, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Learning how to juggle. Brother, if you can juggle multiple people who are going through changes, God bless you, right? Because that's a lot of energy to take on. And just knowing thyself, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I listen, anybody, if you know yourself and you know what's good for you, God bless you. I'm happy for you. Yes. Self inventory, Fred. That's that's that we're gonna do that in July because uh Jamal just committed to coming back in June to talk about that, what you bring to the table. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with that the next time. But next one, self inventory. Are, are you taking a self inventory of yourself? Like are yeah. you, you are you looking at yourself? And with me being where I'm at, I'm separated from my husband right now, and I've had to take a lot of self inventory, things that I contributed to the marriage, things that you know. I might have done, you know, for the reason why we are where we are. That's that's really hard to look into and to look in the mirror. And mm -hmm. that's really hard. And I know from you, you and I are friends. So I know where you're what you're talking about. And I know the reason why you're you're on that right now. I understand mm -hmm. that. But that's that's a good topic. Like, are you looking at yourself before you get in these relationships? Are you really taking an inventory of yourself? Like, who are you? Do you know who you are? Do you know what your limits are? Do you know what you need? Some people might, you ask, okay, so what is that you're looking for? Some people can't even answer that question because they don't even Absolutely. know. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So, yeah. So what about you, Fred? Has your has it changed for you? Or are you still whatever the person that you're in a relationship with? That's that's what you're going with. Well, no, no, no. My, my um, <clears throat> answer is still the same because I've, I know who I am. I know what my needs are. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know what I bring to the table. And so it really depends upon, you know, what I get from, you know, this person. If I like, like I, I am, you know, so with that person, I don't want to, I don't want to share her, that person, her and I, you know, everything works out. It would be a truly a monogamous relationship. You know, mm -hmm. um, it would be another person coming. I don't need another person. I mm -hmm. believe in my heart that that person will be enough all around emotionally, physically, spiritually to be able to satisfy me. Um, I'm out here and I see a person. Then, you know, polygamy, not polygamy, but uh, poly polyamory, that might you know, be what I might be interested in. It, it just depends on who's in my circle at that at that particular moment and what all are we looking for. And that's it. Yeah. Yes. What about you, Barry? Are you, you, are you, do you think that polyamory is the happier way of having a relationship? Is there a happier way or what is your consensus on the question? Barry got a red light, y'all. Y'all better watch out, man. <laughs> I would say that, um, you know, it, de it depends on the person and what works for you. I do know that for me, regardless of whether you're doing monogamy or polyamory, like I appreciate you two guys being vulnerable and being self-aware and I think if we can get more of that in relationships, it will go a long way. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have advice for women. I don't know. Y'all, y'all do y'all's thing. I'm just trying to figure it out. But you know, if, if more men can be vulnerable and self-aware and aware of what, the, what their needs are and what they want and be able to vocalize that and communicate, I think, um, Shoot, that's half the battle right there, you know? Yes. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it sounds like the consensus is that we need to take self inventory. We need to know what our needs are, what our boundaries are, what we can and cannot have in our relationships to be successful for us. And yes. then communicating and talking through it with your partner to see if y'all are on the same page, whether it's right. one partner or multiple partners. So that yes, sounds like absolutely. Consensus tonight. Agreed? It is. It is. Okay. Okay. Well, there we go. Is monogamy the only way to have a healthy relationship? And I'm going to say no. <laughs> it depends on each individual person in the relationship. And it starts with taking self 
inventory. You got to look at yourself first to see what it is that you want, what you can handle, what you need, all that good stuff. So join us next month. Y'all heard it, y'all. Everybody that's on tonight heard Jamal is joining us next month. So join us next month. And we're going to talk about what do you bring to the table? If you want to be in the conversation, just send me a message, Tiffany Sunshine Brown, and I will make sure that you are a guest on the next Relationships and Sex Talk in June. Everybody have a great night. Thank you for watching. Make sure you share. We had a good conversation tonight. Thanks, y'all. Good night. Thanks, y'all. Take care. Bye. Thank you, fellas.